One of my favorite streaming moments of all time was when this happened. Truffles, this is live. So we went live for a performance and halfway through the first song, people in the chat were bummed out because they thought the performance they were watching was pre-recorded. And it blew their minds when I whispered their YouTube usernames in the microphone, proving we were live. So what made them think this was pre-recorded? Well, the shots were clearly coming from a camera and not a webcam. The picture was crisp and clear. We were switching between multiple cameras on the fly and the sound was perfectly mixed. I certainly don't blame them for thinking this was recorded in advance. Recently, there have been a bunch of other live streams that turned out to be just somebody hitting play on a pre-recorded video. <coughs> Dream Evil, I'm looking at you. So clearly, no one could produce live events on this level without a TV studio and tens of thousands of dollars in equipment, right? Well, Minions and Mortals, I'm about to blow your minds and change your live streaming game for $30. Hails, minions and mortals, this is Fang from Lords of the Trident. As we're still clearly neck deep in COVID for the next... <sighs> Good lord, I don't know. Our last few videos have been dealing with the subject of live streaming. First, we showed you how you can basically mix your live stream audio for free, and then we showed you how to build a multi-stream server box for $100. If you haven't seen these yet, there are links in the description. The last step to making your live stream amazing is your video. When someone utters the phrase, I need video from a computer, most people will think of webcams. And then they'll suddenly have a guilt flashback when they realized they didn't subscribe to this YouTube channel or hit the like button. Oh my God. Webcams are easy plug and play video sources that generally can look pretty good, but it would be way better if you could pull your video from say a DSLR or a camcorder or heck, even a GoPro. These cameras are more designed for the task at hand. They're less laggy, give you more control over your video, and generally just look better than a webcam. But these cameras don't usually work by plugging directly into a computer. So how do we pull the video from these cameras into a more computer-friendly format? Enter the HDMI to USB capture card, or maybe I should call it a capture dongle. I don't know. Uh, at least the 12 year olds in the comments will get a kick out of me saying dongle over and over. In the before times, you'd need a very expensive card inside of your computer to capture video signal from a camera. Eventually these became smaller and then started to live outside of the computer in a box format. As streaming became more of a thing, companies like Elgato Camlink started offering tiny HDMI to USB capture cards from anywhere between $80 to $200. But of course, once the pandemic hit, these rocketed in price to something like $400 each. However, lurking in the shadows was the cheap knockoff brand companies waiting for their moment to strike. And boy, howdy, did they ever strike. If you search Amazon for HDMI capture, you'll find a bunch of devices like these from companies that seem to appear and disappear quicker than Jeff Bezos' concern for warehouse workers. <laughs> I picked up a number of these for 30 bucks, and they do a really good job of capturing 1080p video at 30 frames a second. The USB side plugs into any USB 3.0 port on your computer, and the other side can accept, well, HDMI input from pretty much anything HDMI. There are a few technical caveats to using these devices, which I'll get into a little later in the video. So now that you've got the ability to plug HDMI into your computer, where should that video source come from? The best option, if you've got it, is to pull video from a cinema camera like the Blackmagic Pocket 4K or a DSLR like a Canon or a Nikon. All of these cameras have either standard or mini HDMI out on them, which can plug directly into your dongle. You can also swap out lenses, set your focus, and really tweak your video to make it look amazing. Obviously, not everyone has cameras like these, but if you're in the market, you don't need to spend a ton of money to get an amazing looking image. Use Canon DSLRs like the T3i and the T4i are going for like 250 bucks, and that usually comes with a lens. Another option would be a cheap camcorder. There are no name brand camcorders on Amazon for as little as 50 bucks, and even though the picture won't be as good as a DSLR with a nice lens, 
It'll probably look better than your webcam. Just make sure you find a model with HDMI out. Another cheap option is a GoPro, or in our case, a knockoff GoPro. The Akaso action camera that we use shoots in 4K, has a pretty great picture on it, and it only costs about 80 bucks. Add the fact that it's got a micro HDMI out port, and you're just one cable purchase away from some great looking streaming. Once you've got these cameras hooked up to your dongles and your dongles plugged into your computer, you're pretty much set to go. Adding these cameras into Streamlabs or OBS is pretty much the same as adding a webcam source. It'll show up as something like USB capture device. So select that and you should be good to go. I'm gonna go over a few other things that will really up your streaming game. But first, I promise some technical caveats for these capture cards. First and foremost, at least on Windows, most computers don't like to have more than two webcams or capture cards on the same USB bus. Most computers have two USB buses on their motherboards, and you can kind of equate this to the number of entrance doors at a concert. Everybody's trying to cram through these doors to see the show, so the more people you have cramming through the same door, the more that people are gonna bump into each other and cause problems. If you can, try to plug your capture cards into different sides of your machine or different areas in the front and back of your computer tower. If you have a computer desktop and wanna do more than two cameras without running into problems, you may wanna purchase an additional USB 3.0 card for your machine. That'll create another bus or concert door for your signal to get through. Okay, a few other technical things to keep in mind. First, I wouldn't keep your dongles plugged in all the time. I found that some of these dongles will not respond after being plugged in for days at a time, and I have to like unplug and replug them in order for them to show back up. Along the same lines, if you're using USB extension cables to extend your reach into say the next room, remember not to go too long as your dongles need power and stream a lot of data, which can degrade the further out you go. Finally, to cut down on these devices going unavailable or the video freezing in place, make sure that the computer doesn't automatically turn off any devices to save power. You can turn the setting off by opening device manager in your control panel. Find your universal serial bus controller section and expand it. Right click and open the properties on your root hubs and any other USB devices under this menu. If you find a device that has a power management tab, make sure to uncheck allow the computer to turn this device off to save power. This is not just an issue with the knockoff brands. This freezing happens with the high-end capture cards too. So you should turn this off no matter what. Okay, technical stuff over. Let me tell you about a few more things that will take your stream to the next level. Let's say you've got a bunch of camera angles set up, but you're a solo artist or not in a situation where someone can help change your camera angles for you on the fly. Not to worry, because Streamlabs has an app for your phone or tablet called Stream Deck. This will connect to the Streamlabs program running on your computer and allow you to do things like switch scenes, turn audio on or off, or even edit the screen items in real time. If you do have a trusted person in your COVID bubble who can help with the camera work, you may also want to invest in some camera movement to spice up your stream. This can be as simple as using the zoom on your camera's lens or as complex as setting up a camera dolly. We use a dolly system for the Baron Solo Shred Sessions, which really adds a nice cinematic look to the stream. Do you have a favorite video tool that would work for streaming? If so, let us know what we're missing in the uh, comments below. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't done so yet, make sure to sign up for our Patreon to receive amazing prizes, free music, guitar tabs, behind the scenes access, and more. Take your most metal browser over to patreon.com slash lords of the trident right now. We'll see you live on the internet. Until next time, stay metal.